Hi everyone, welcome back to TJ Economics, where today we're going to be looking at Year 12 Microeconomics, specifically the functions of the price mechanism. And so the price mechanism, of course, has its three functions that work together to successfully allocate resources, goods and services efficiently. So, what are the three components of the price mechanism? Well, the first, we have the signalling function, we have the incentive function, and we have the rationing function. And what the price mechanism does is it uses prices to fulfil each of these functions to allocate resources. So the first of those, the signalling function, what does that do? So the signalling function reflects when there is excess demand or excess supply in the market. And it reflects that with a signal, some sort of way of showing us that there is too much demand or too much supply in the market. The incentive function then prices, perform the incentive function by incentivizing firms to raise or lower their prices in response to excess supply or demand. And then lastly, the rationing function, once prices have changed, prices perform a rationing function by bidding up prices in a shortage to those who are most willing to pay, or vice versa, prices will lower when there's excess supply so that more people can buy the product. So let's look at an example of this in action then. So. Uh, many of you may remember in the lockdowns of 2020, um, puppies were very popular. The demand for puppies skyrocketed. In fact, as this article from The Economist, you can see May 2020 shows us, the demand for puppies was booming. Especially in the UK, demand for puppies in the lockdowns of 2020 was booming. And so we can look at that in action. So here is our supply and our demand curves, our fairly basic market here. So we've got an increase in demand from D1 to D2. At the original price of P1, that would create excess demand. Because there's been that increase in demand, at the original price, there is excess demand. That excess demand is our first function, the signaling function. And what the signaling function means is that because there is excess demand in this example, it means that there's going to be too many customers, i.e. puppy breeders are going to have their phones ringing off the hook, there are going to be loads of emails, the puppy breeders are going to be receiving signals that there is excess demand in the market. And so you could apply this to a bakery. Maybe a bakery, if there is excess demand, is going to have queues out of the shop and their shelves are going to be empty. All of their pastries are being bought. So there is a signal that there is excess demand. The incentive function then works to encourage the producers to raise their prices. And so puppy breeders will put up their prices. In that bakery example, the baker will put up their prices that incentivizes them to raise their price. That's our second function, the incentive function. And then, of course, because they've put their prices up, that will ration off the good or service to those people who want it the most. The higher price means that some consumers are no longer willing and able to buy that product, and therefore, some consumers will leave the market. All of this results in a new equilibrium price with a lower quantity, thus meaning the price mechanism has successfully re responded to an increase in demand and has successfully reallocated resources to the market. And as you can see, in May of 2020, the price for cockapoo, for example, was 260% higher than it had been before COVID. At nearly £3,000, a cavapoo was just over 200% more, and so on and so forth. You can see the price of puppies went up a lot in 2020, and this is how it worked. That's the market mechanism at work. So let's do a slightly different example then. Again, we can look at our signaling, incentive and rationing function. We're going to look at these three functions working in the market mechanism, the price mechanism in another example. So you may all remember as well that at the start of 2020, oil, the price of oil went crazy. For example, if we look at this headline, we can see that the price of oil in the US actually went negative. There was so little demand that the price of oil plummeted. So let's have a look then. We've got our shift inwards of demand. There's been a decrease in demand. That means at the original price level, we have excess supply. There's too much oil. Oil producers have oil tankers that are being full that no one's buying. They have barrels of oil that no one wants. There's a signal being emitted by that excess supply telling them you've got too much oil, your price is too high. Again, we can think about our baker. Maybe the baker if the demand for their baguettes goes down, they're going to have loads of bread, loads of pastries on the shelves that's going unsold. There is excess supply, and that sends them a signal telling them that something needs to change. Therefore, there is an incentive, in this case for oil producers, to lower their prices. And therefore, we will move from P1 to P2. 
and that's our incentive function at work. Lastly then, because the price has lowered, the rationing function works and consumers are now more willing and able to buy this product. And that means that we're going to end up with a lower price and a lower quantity. And as you can see, in early 2020, the price of oil actually went so far down momentarily for a day or so, it was actually negative for a price of oil. That's how little demand there was during the lockdowns. Think of all the companies, cars, vans, etc. that were no longer working. We just didn't need oil. And so the price actually went negative. Of course, it's now rebounded. But for a short while, demand was actually so low that the price of oil was negative. So those are our three functions of the signaling function, the incentive function and the rationing function. A quick recap then. So the signaling function then, when there is excess demand or excess supply, it signals to agents in the market that this is the case. For example, producers will find if there is excess demand that they don't have enough to satisfy all consumers. If there's excess supply, they'll find that at the end of the day, not all of their product has been sold. And so that signals to them that they should change their prices. Then when prices do change, firms are either incentivized to produce more if the price has gone up or they're incentivized to produce less if the price has gone down. And so by the price going up or down, it incentivizes producers to produce more or produce less. And then lastly, the rationing function, when prices go up or down, that will ration off the good or service to consumers who are willing to pay for it. So if you have enjoyed today's video, do follow me on Instagram and Twitter. You can see my handles on the screen there. Do like and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. And feel free to leave a comment with any topics you'd like me to cover in future. And I'll see you guys next time.